you lose that youth and um, your purpose sometimes, right? Because when you're a kid, you know, you're just like, ah, yeah, yeah, I'll just play sports, I'll do whatever, and you get caught up. It's who you become. We're very tribalist people. You know, everyone wants to be a part of something. This is who I am. I'm a, I'm a wrestler. I'm a baseball player. When those things go away, so you're searching for what's next. Because when you're not, that's why I think so many people get lost, depressed, and anxious. It's tough. It's really, it's hard. Everybody struggles with it. I struggle. I've struggled with it, right? When I got out of the Navy, when, uh, you know, done competing, just building my business is really what's helping me. And so it's keeping me focused on my training because if without it, then I, I would be completely lost. And you don't have, you know, I don't even have my training partners anymore. Like my buddies are gone. And so, um, you know, finding that and then, and finding that next thing to, to go after, right. To give yourself a goal. And like, I'm, I'm trying to search for something right now too, for me, um, outside of the, the, you know, growing the business, something for me to like have a goal towards the to work towards and to strive for having, you know, my 500 pound back squat and deadlift. That's fine. Those are, you know, gym goals, but I also want to like go do something like outside and you know i have a physical yeah. goal it's like okay well i was a navy seal and i was a crossfit games competitor but like now obviously i have my kids you know too but it's all it's also like i still have i still need my thing and i think everyone needs that and you know figuring out what that is next it's been a struggle it's because because you have to really find the passion for it you can't just be like oh i want to do this and now it's like okay what's next what, what am i doing now what's the what's the next adventure and I haven't found it yet. And, uh, you know, but to keep looking and keep searching because it's easy to get down on yourself, especially with social media where everything is awesome on everybody's feed all day long. And everyone seems like they're doing more cool shit than you are. So, yeah, figuring out what that next thing is. Sam Briggs posted something about the race across America, basically all the way across the United States. You actually bike, road bike. And I remember actually when I was like, I'm turning 40, I want to do something really cool. That was one of the things I looked at and I was like, that could be cool. And, and then I looked up the world record time. <laughs> and I was like, cause in your head, you know, you're like, oh, let me see how, what it would be like to, to, to do the whole, you know, to do it the fastest. So Sam posted something about, I'm thinking about doing that. And I was like, hey, if you're really thinking about doing that, like, like let me know, like I might be interested, something I thought about doing. And um, she said that the guy who has the world record he, he was biking 22 hours every, every day. He was, every day he was, he was on his bike at least 22 hours a day. I'm like, that's crazy. So, but hey, you never know. Maybe you don't have to go for a world record. Maybe just do it for fun. Another day of training at 40. Give you guys another example of kind of how I'm still training these days and give you guys some more ideas of what this program is truly gonna look like. Um, again, the same thing, I kind of, you know, get loose, get warmed up. Um, I'm gonna do, it's either I'm gonna do conditioning with strength combined or I'm gonna do strength, accessory, and then um, there will, sometimes there'll be extra credit on these workouts. And I, you know, started writing that program and I started putting some in because, you know, you never know. Some days you're going to feel really good. And you're going to be like, man, I wish I had more. And maybe you'll have to figure out your own, or I'm going to give you a little bit more and call it extra credit. Right? So if you're feeling good, do the extra credit. If you're not, don't worry. It's not going to hurt you. That it's just, it's just something bonus for people who, you know, if that kettle's hot, sometimes you got to let it burn, baby. So, um, yeah. So today... I do, and I, you, I'll always have one day of sprinting in because I think sprinting, jumping, agility is things that get overlooked as we get older, right? We're like, oh, I can't do that anymore. I can't do that anymore. Well, fuck that. I want to stay as young and feel as young as I can. And I think one thing that we, we don't do enough as we get older is, you know, sprint or jump, right? Because there is some risk there. But I still think that there is application for it. And I, there's reasons for uh, human beings to keep doing that as they age. Um, I think it's going to keep us feeling younger, right? One of the best ways to keep your testosterone levels up is sprinting, right? That's why sprinters look the way they do and long distance runners look the way they do, right? Most long distance runners are skinny 
thin. They can't jump more than two or three inches off the ground where sprinters look like, you know, freaking freaks of nature who are still jacked out of their mind and have all this like crazy athleticism. So I never want to get away from that as long as I can. I'm going to keep doing that stuff. So I always have one day of some sort of sprinting element in this workout. So today we're going to do back accessories. That's going to be our accessory pieces. Uh, for the first part, we're going to do squatting with some, it's not going to be a heavy day today. This is going to be like a more of a uh, fast speed, uh, lightweight, moving the weight fast for higher reps, um, which I actually like to do. I like to do both. I like to go heavy and I like to go light. I like I, I love squatting. Squatting is my favorite. And so uh, we'll do that. We'll start with squatting today. And then we'll do our back accessories. And then we'll finish with sprints. And again, this workout can be done in 50 minutes to an hour easily if you help move through it fast. Um, so yeah, still getting fit at 40, baby. Let's go. When you get older, you're like, oh, I'll just come in, I'll do some bodybuilding, I'll be fine, I'm fit, right? And you are, you, you, you can do that. But like doing conditioning, getting your heart, like having a strong heart and then having some fast switch muscles, I mean, like I think that is, that is the fountain of youth that we all like forget about, right? Like what makes us more springy, fast, run, run fast, jump higher, um, like, boosting our testosterone levels. Like you just feel useful when you do those things. It almost feels like a kid again. And like, when you don't do that stuff, it's like, it's, you know, it goes away so quick and it's hard to get back. And then, and then you start to risk injury. Right. And so I'm not saying you do it often, but at least like once a week still. Uh, and that's what, like, that's all I'm going to program in it for. And that's typically when I go, when I do like agility, jumping, sprinting, stuff like that, it's maybe once, twice a week max, you know, and it's, but I, I still, it makes me feel good when I do it. So we're gonna squat. It's gonna be lightweight, faster squatting, heels elevated, because I wanna hit a little bit more of my quad. Um, when I stick to just back squats on flat ground, I typically hit my posterior chain a lot, so my quads lack. And so I'm either front squatting or doing heels elevated squats uh, to really hammer the quads. Uh, I'm gonna go four by 10, working up in weight. Um, it'll stay roughly, 60 to 70 percent will be my uh, target reps or target weights and then we'll go into some back accessory so i'm going to do a t-bar row i haven't uh, a landmine is a great way and then with a handle you can get some t-bar rowing in very cheap um, compared to obviously like a t-bar row machine or if you have cable rows that works too uh, then i'm going to do some palms up barbell row um, all of these are going to be four by tens the best way to not have back pain is having a strong back, right? So I still hammer my back pretty often. Um, and especially since I'm not doing a lot of Olympic weightlifting where a lot of Olympic weightlifting hits that upper back a lot. So I have to add in these uh, almost like isolated back movements that helps. Uh, so back extensions and then Nordics for my hamstrings. Um, having strong hamstrings is, is huge. But when you hit your hamstrings a lot, make sure that you're stretching them out too. Uh, that can definitely cause some knee pain if you have really tight hamstrings and low back pain. So make sure that you stretch those things out. And then we're gonna end, like we were just talking about sprinting, right? So you can sprint on just about anything. You can sprint on the rower, you can sprint on a bike, you can sprint on uh, running. So today we're gonna do, I like to change it up. Uh, I sprinted actually last week on the runner. but So today we're gonna do echo bike sprints because they're everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. We're gonna do a five by 20 on the 230. So start your clock. Get your 20 cal sprint in, rest until 2.30, and do that five times. The first three don't hurt as bad. Normally, sets four and five are where the pain starts to set in. You're going to see me probably rolling around on the ground like, uh, like a, I don't know, like a, someone whose legs hurt really bad. <laughs> so that's it. Another day of my new program coming out. Um, again, we can get this thing knocked out quick, fast. I'm going to try and talk to you guys though. So it'll probably be a little longer, but yeah, you can get this thing worked that knocked out in 50 to 50 minutes to an hour easily. So here we go.
And so I, when I started doing the heels elevated squat, that really helped me to engage my quad. I used to, if I did thrusters or any sort of squatting, like light, fast, lots of reps, my quads would be like, I could, I'd be walking like this, you know? Now it's like all hamstring, adductor, glute, you know, is what I'm feeling. So I, I started doing these and more front squats and I'm starting to see uh, or feel my quads engaged more. Not every day on this program is gonna have like conditioning right away. Um, so I don't think that conditioning is necessary every single day, but I, it will be on the majority of days. But there might be a day like this where we go straight into strength and then do the accessory and then end with the sprinting conditioning. So um, yeah, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna always be like a Metcon of sort. Obviously you don't need these wedges. You could use change plates just to get your heel, heel up a little bit. It's the same thing. I've seen people use two by fours to put their heels up on. So lots of different ways to do this. This isn't, these wedges aren't 100% necessary, right? We just got, like, like we said before, we just get the job done. Oh gosh, I gotta put my 20 cal sprints on camera. Yuck. Especially five. Five's like, Four and five are awful. One, two, and three don't feel too bad. Sometimes I'll go actually above my working set, make the weight feel light, and then come back down. Just heavier than my working sets, and then come back down. Just to make the weight feel a little lighter. Just do one or two reps. Get the depth as much as I can. I do go a little narrow, too. That help, helps me engage my quads a little more. Almost feet together. Um, I really feel my quads engage more. You can go a little wider than what I'm doing. It can be shoulder width apart. Definitely just hammers the quads a little more, even holding just a big dumbbell and doing this is, works. I just like barbells. I will belt up for this one because either it's all, it's more about leg, right? Leg strength, right? So I'm not concerned. I hit my core enough in other spots. So for me, I just know that I'm gonna feel better with a belt here on this. Um, and I can, I'll be able to move the weight faster. So this is 320. Five. Yeah, this is 325. So I'm gonna try to do tens here. This will be my first set, and I'm I'm gonna go up each set. So I don't know how high I'll get, or it'll depend on how the weight feels. But tens will be tough too, and I'll take a good two minutes, two and a half, two minutes between these sets. <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna go up this time, Go to, just go to 335, 10 more pounds. You can pick a set weight too, if you wanna do this for the four sets of 10, by all means, or if you want to you know, progress up in the weight, that's fine. I feel, I feel like going up a little bit. We'll see how this set feels though. Last set felt decent for my first set. So hopefully this set feels better. If not, I'll just stay here. A little better. Oh, the quads are feeling good though. All right, we'll go up 10 more pounds. 35 felt good. Yeah. Gotta love squatting, it's my favorite. Any day I know I get to squat. Like I said, heart rate's low. <laughs> no. So that's a 10. It's cardio, baby. Whew. All right, we'll go up one more. 355. All right, last set, let's go. Last set, best set. It's not how you start, it's how you finish, right, baby? Whew. You know, it's... I say speed, 
but really this is a, a volume trainer, right? Because, you know, when you go heavy for just ones and twos reps, that's great. Overall strength is great. Absolute strength is great. But also being able to do higher percentages for higher numbers has a great transition as well to a lot of things. So I always try to do one volume day, one absolute strength day. And uh, yeah, like I said, I started doing the heels elevated. It's helped really hit my quads. If you don't have an issue with hitting your quads, you don't have to do the heels elevated. Or if you do, you know, it's, uh, I like it. No, again, you can hit it with goblet squats. You can get real deep in there, deep in the movement with that. All right, I said I actually did feel pretty good. Uh, one other thing I do want to talk about before we switch off to squatting is unracking the bar. And that's been a huge lesson for me as my weightlifting, whatever careers moved on is making sure that this bar feels light coming off the rack. And to do that, I breathe into my stomach, not just my chest, right? Breathe into my stomach, brace really hard, press into the bar. See, I'm not, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a big breath, squeeze my traps, get braced really in the hole in my diaphragm, not just my lungs, right? And then I press into that bar and almost feel the weight before it comes off the rack. And then I step off, right? And once I do that, the weight feels drastically lighter coming off the squat rack, which keeps me in better positions when I actually start to go into my reps. So if you're going to unrack a bar, whether it be bench press, squatting, anything, make the barbell feel light, jerks, make the barbell feel light coming off of the rack and it will help drastically with hitting your lift. I make my kids do that and they have seen the difference of just stepping up to a bar, not getting really set and unracking it as opposed to getting a full belly of air, bracing, pressing into the bar before it actually pulling, they call it pulling the slack out of the bar before actually lifting it off the rack. It's been a drastic, huge difference, game changer. It will build your confidence, your mental confidence in hitting reps as well. So I, I normally put like four to 10, but sometimes if I'm not feeling the muscles yet, I'll go to like uh, 12s or 15s. This is such an easy way to get a T-bar row. You know, you get some sort of handle device. I got this from Rogue. It's called the Back Widow. I really like this thing. Um, you can use it on a, like a cable or a barbell and you just get a landmine. And uh, I think this thing was like 80 bucks and I think the landmines are on the same. So a pretty cheap alternate to a T-bar row. That's what I felt always limited me in my front squat was my upper back strength, right? I'd get real hunched over, real, a dog taking a shit, you know? So if you get that upper back strong, right? T-bar rows, great. Zercher squats are great. Barbell rows, which we're gonna do next are great. Uh, back extensions, right? Never gonna go wrong with having a strong back. Strong legs, a strong back, you're pretty much set. I like to do both chest supported and unsupported, so. I tend to move, the, move through these a little quicker, a little less rest, uh, probably a minute max rest here. Start to feel that upper back, start to get pumped up. Like we were talking about earlier, right? You should feel that upper back start, the muscles start to get a pump in. Um, if you're not, right, make the adjustment. Really think about pulling the elbow, elbows low and back, right? And pull the weight to your belly button as opposed to up here, like pull, pulling to your chest, right? I'm trying to pull low. Barbell row, I go palms up normally. I feel like I feel more in my upper back than if I go palms down. So um, yeah, play with it and see which one, which way you like and feel it more, right? That's the whole purpose is just to feel that upper back, get the pump, almost my clean grip, sort of gripping. Hard to make sure you find that right, that fine line between 
pushing the weight, going a little bit heavier, but also not using like almost body motion to get the weight up. Playing with the weight to find that right. Too light, good form. Too heavy, bad form. You know, finding that moderate weight where you still feel the pump and you get something out of it and you get the growth out of it. And again, guys, I write four by 10, but sometimes I'll go to 12s or 15s, um, depending on how the back feels at the time. Sometimes I'm just gonna write in my program actually max sets, max reps, right? So what that knee means is get to where you feel a really, really crazy pump and then get one or two more reps in. So do some weighted back extensions now. Now this could be a hip extension technically too, uh, but back extension, hip extension. I just want to hit my hamstrings, glutes, and low back. Well, that'll get your arms. Uh, I'll do these weighted. A GSG is a great machine. Obviously there's other back machines too, or back extension machines. Yeah, you don't have to use weighted. These uh, these are definitely something that you can work up to, scale, scale up to. So start with no weight, doing, you know, 10 to 15 reps, um, start adding small weights and then, you know, slowly progressing. It's always a, it's always a progression, right? This is, this program is designed for working out for the rest of your life. So don't get caught up in numbers. Don't get caught up in reps. Don't get caught up in weights, you know, just get in, get your work done and then go on and do awesome shit outside. So that's, uh, the main focus, right? Just putting in the work, still keeping your fitness, keeping your health, and uh, being able to beat your kids at sports. That's always the focus. I don't think I've ever done a sit-up on it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Probably have. Very few though. Mainly it's for uh, your head for handstand push-ups and your knees when you uh, stretch. <laughs> I don't think I've done too many ab mat sit-ups to be honest. So this thing's called the Nordic Stick. This company I have no affiliation with. They sent it to me uh, after they saw me doing something. I think, I think the belt the belted Nordics on a bench. They sent me this thing. It's actually really nice. I like it. So it just goes underneath the door and you just kind of pull up on this line that tightens down your legs and boom, good. Almost to the fun stuff. This is the boring stuff, the most slow boring stuff. I used to hate you know, now it's, now I just have days where it's like, okay, this is all I need to do. And then obviously I'll get to the sprints at the end. But, uh, you know, as you're getting older, you just gotta be wiser with the way you work out. Um, know your body. And there's days where you can push and, you know, days where you need to maybe just think about doing isolation stuff. So that's why this program is a good program for everyone. It's gonna have a mix of everything, a good solid four or five days of conditioning uh, four or five days of strength and, um, lots of accessories. So it's a good, it's a good fun program. It's basically exactly how I've been training for the last two years and I've enjoyed it. Here we are. We're at the, the fun part, right? The sprints. Are they the fun part? I don't know. Yeah. So you rest, you basically use the clock on the, on the bike, go to a two thirty. So do your 20 cal sprint use the same, the clock will continue to run. And then once it hits 2.30, start reset it and, uh, and do it again five times. Um, again, for, for everyone, this is, you know, sprinting has been shown to elevate testosterone levels, right? For men, that's, that's what we're all striving for, right? Having more testosterone. Um, you know, it's our hormone that we, we need to be men. So yeah, um, I'll never stop sprinting. My sprint times will obviously change, but going 100% is going 100%, and that's all we got to do. And this thing right here is, it's one of the worst ways to go 100%. So if you can get yourself, do yourself a favor, get yourself a fan bike. I think it's, if I was going to pick, I think I've said this before in a different video, if I was going to pick one machine that I had to, if I had to choose between all of them, it would be this one. You can do long, slow duration on this. You can do, obviously, sprints and you can do in between moderate pace. You can go arms only, you can go legs only, uh, you can go back and forth. So this is the one machine that is just so versatile. Um, you know, the Swiss army knife of 
the machines, right? Where everything else is kind of one dimensional, right? A biker is just biking, a skier is just upper body, a rower, rower is probably a little bit, you could do a little bit of both. You get upper body and lower body. And then obviously a running machine is just a running machine. So if I had to, ch if I had to pick, it'd be the echo bike. So here's the real time of here we go. I'll see you on the other side. I'll probably be laying down, huffing and puffing, wanting to die. Get a few cows in, you know, instead of just going straight into the first sprint, right? Bring that heart rate up just a little bit, but then stop and start the clock over to get your actual 20 cal time. You know, these, for me, I try to stay right around 20 seconds. I know that's not fast, but for me, they are. It's my 100%, baby. Let's go. Try to bring that heart rate back down. Get some nasal breathing in. Nasal breathing will also give your body more nitric oxide. So I like to keep pedaling. Um, I definitely feel a little bit more of a flush the lactic out and then if I just stop completely on these if I stop moving completely my legs tend to build up get more pumped uh, a little bit faster so kind of keep pedaling slow until that 230 mark and reset your cock Remember, stay on the bike, probably like three minutes, nice and easy at the end of this. Try to flush the lactic acid, the blood out of your legs. 
if I just get off the bike, I'll probably cry. It hurts so bad. Never puked, but definitely have almost cried. But I haven't. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. That is such a mental workout. As much as this physical, the rest becomes like where your demons and all your self doubt and all your shortcomings start to enter your mind and tell you how weak you are, how you should stop, how you should only do four rounds or get more rest, go longer than the 230 mark. And that's where you really have to fight back and tell your fucking brain to shut up and let your body do what it does. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's good. Young, useful. I feel like I'm 20 again, baby. Woo! Oh, those legs. This program's coming for you. Don't be left behind. Wish you started earlier. Right? The hardest part is getting going. Right? Getting into the gym and getting it done. The moment you start, the moment you make your part of your routine, part of your day, the easier it becomes. The easier in the aspect of getting there it becomes. The workouts themselves never become easier. So, yeah. There it is. Another day. Training for life. Training in your 40s. Training at an older age. Programs coming in hot. Give me some tips. Or give me some uh, suggestions for names. So, I hope you guys like that. And as always, don't forget to pay the man.